Hey, good afternoon. I'm Tony Libertor, Athletic Director and Associate Principal at Columbia River High School. Today we are going to meet with Skyview Varsity Boys Basketball Coach Matt Gruler on It's Not the X's and O's podcast. And the term for that is we're not going to talk strategy or anything, but we're going to talk about team building and culture building. And again, Coach Gruler is going to give us a little peek behind the curtain about Skyview Basketball. Coach, before we start, let's talk about uh, the last couple of seasons of Skyview Basketball. You guys were perennial, uh, you know, top five, top ten in the state. What kind of run are you expecting next year? Oh, next year? Um, yeah, you never quite know. Uh, we have a good group coming back. Um, this is our seventh year. Uh, it'll be the start of our seventh year at Skyview. Um, kind of getting getting going in the right direction. So we're, we've got a spot now where kids are coming in our program and they're understanding what it takes to work and be successful. Um, and so we re- we're going to return three starters for next year. Um, that has played significant minutes and six guys that played significant minutes for us last year. So we're pretty excited about where the group we got coming back. And, uh, and so hopefully we just kind of keep it rolling. So yeah, we've been lucky enough to have kids who have bought into what we're talking about, uh, outside the X's and O's stuff, as well as buying into what it takes on the X's and O's thing. So, uh, hopefully we just kind of keep that rolling and keep that momentum going in the right direction. Okay. So let's talk about that buy-in. Um, why do you coach? You know, um, one of the things I, st- I started with in coaching, uh, I, you know, I started coaching right, pretty much right out of college, and uh, I read a book, uh, and I know we'll probably talk about it a little bit later, but Inside Out Coaching by Joe Ehrman, and, and it talked about your why, and uh, so you know, that was one of the things I did right away was kind of start to, after I read the book, was, okay, why, why do I want to coach? And we talk a lot, our, our, our mission statement in our program is to help lead boys to become men by teaching positivity, accountability, togetherness, hard work, and selflessness through competing in the game of basketball. So our, we call it Storm Paths, P-A-T-H-S. So that's positivity, accountability, togetherness, hard work, and selflessness. And so that's, uh, we want to teach boys to become men. And really, you know, we get kids that come in as freshmen and they're all over the map as far as where they are maturity-wise and right. become in that process. Um, but that's kind of our, our over-ending goal. We try to, um, you know, apply that as much as we can um, in our daily our daily lessons. Okay, so let's just, you know, take a like a, middle of the season practice Mm -hmm. what motivates you i mean you know middle of the season right january sure it's It's dark yeah it's the grind sometimes yeah yeah you know i I think the the main thing that motivates me uh no obviously i'm a i'm a competitive person right and i I played basketball uh from as long as i can remember until you know i I couldn't play it anymore (laughs) people told me to stop uh but you know, so the competitive piece is a piece that, that definitely drives me, and I, you know, I think being around kids who are competitive and brings that out of me. So I think that's a positive thing. But at the end of the day, uh, why I get into coaching and why my staff is 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 where we are uh, is that we care about the kids. We want to see the kids grow and, and helping them com- learn how to compete and be successful is super fun for us to watch that. Uh, we, we're pretty well aware that we don't, we're, we're as good of coaches as they are players. So, um, you know, we want to watch them compete, watch them learn the lessons and then hopefully build these relationships. And, and we've been lucky last year having Tyler Hoffman on our staff who was on um, the first, my first team at Skyview was a, a senior on that team. So we're starting to have some of those guys come back right, into the good. program and be a part of that. Uh, and so kind of seeing like, Hey, that we make some connections, we make some lifelong, um, uh, teach some lifelong, lifelong lessons and teach some things that they can bring back uh, and they want to be a part of something special. I think that's like, that's what motivates us. And so it's hard sometimes when you're, you know, in the grind, those dog days of January. But uh, I think what it is is that we want to te- help them to be the best that they can. Uh, and at the same time, knowing that hopefully the lessons that they're learning are things that they're going to, hey, I remember that January practice that wasn't very fun to be at, that we just lost. But we showed up and we got better. And gosh, now that I'm a, a lawyer or a doctor or a husband right. or whatever, I know that hey, there's going to be dark days, but we're going to, you know, we're going to come back and we're going to be better the next day. So let's reverse the record. Let's say sure. you, you know, you were two and fifteen, sure. yes, or whatever. I've been, I've been there. <laughs> yes. So I mean, how, you know, again, the grind's a little bit different. Sure. But how do you make sure that the paths? Yes is still you know so installed. We, yeah that's a great question we try to start every day uh our our daily meeting we have a quote of the day uh and so i've i've gathered quotes 
throughout my coaching career and I get them from other people and now I get them from old players or current players hey coach I saw this quote and I added to this book and then I kind of go through and some of them are I randomly select and some are like okay we just lost so let me find one about uh, those type of things but we try to then tie that in like what does that mean for us and what does that mean for real life so uh, that day I'll give the quote of the day and then I pick out you know some players and say what does that mean for us uh, and, and and we've started to see a lot of buy-in from the kids on that hey that's this is what this means you know that's what the same thing in my chemistry class and hopefully those types of things tie over uh, and then we try to focus on inside those meetings um, and with the families or with the with the players is what are the small victories that we have, right? Okay. We can't can't always focus on the wins and losses, but you know, last game we turned it over 15 times, and this time it was only 14 times. Uh, or that you know, hey, last time we didn't shoot the ball very well, this time we did. Or what are the things that we're improving on, uh, and kind of really focusing on the small uh, the small things, and just kind of really again going back to we're here to make memories, we're here to have fun, we're here to kind of be together. Uh, the very few people get a chance to do this into their high school varsity level career. So let's focus on that's, that's some fun stuff, and um, you know it's it's easier sometimes when you're winning, but it, it's you know I think uh, the, the message is the same is that we're we're trying to improve every day. Okay, good. So earlier you'd mentioned um, the book. I asked you, um, you know, a book and an author, a coach that um, summarized your philosophy. Mm-hmm. Can you talk us uh, or talk to us a little bit about the inside out coaching? Yeah, I think the main the main thing that I took away from that. Um, from that book was his talk about the difference between a transactional coach and a transformational coach. And at that time I was fairly young in my coaching career and it was easy to relate to some of the coaches that I'd have being transactional coaches. Um, especially at the youth, it felt like at the youth level it was like, okay, a transactional coach, I want you, you're going to help me win or you're going to help the team win and that's what you're, that's what our relationship's about. It's a transaction. You, you come and perform, we win. Cool. That's that's how we end. The transformational coach kind of goes a step beyond, and it's like I want to help you become better overall. And it's not just about what's on the floor; it's off the floor. Uh, and so again, that's when I really started to take take um, stock on what what was really important. Why why were the coaches who were important to me? Why were they important? And and again, a lot of them had to do with the stuff off the court. The guys that would have their office open, and I'd eat lunch with them, or sure. uh, the guys that would uh, who are my teachers as well. So we got a little bit deeper connection, or those types of things. Those are the things that I remember more uh, than anything that happened on the court. Um, and so trying to remember. So and, and again, sometimes I'm not great at remembering that. You know, you come home after a tough loss, uh, and it's easy to just kind of really be focused on it. And actually, I give a lot of credit to my wife. She's the one that kind of goes, hey, why do you do this? Remember why you do this. Sure. This is all about making kids uh, become better men, and they're going to learn a lesson through this. So what's that lesson, and what are you going to go back into, uh, into the practice talk, talking about the next day? So, okay, and a couple of times you've mentioned in your responses, you know, that you're competitive. You mentioned the tough loss, and we'll talk mm-hmm. about that again. How, how did you, I mean, what was this, like, what, did, what clicked for you to be able to turn off that competitiveness? Because I know you want to win. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't want to be two and eighteen. I don't think it ever clicked off. So, I mean, I think that's the thing is it'll never. So you never, just prioritize. Different. Yeah, you have to prioritize different. You have to understand uh, that you know winning is a process, and you know, I mean, it's become a little bit more of a cliche now. But right. you know, um, that process doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes, sometimes it does, and it's and it's great, and it's whatever. But uh, if you're not if you're not um, very focused on creating a culture that's going to last, uh, those are going to be fleeting times. And so, really, just kind of getting to a point where. Um, you know the, the the wins and losses are great and and it's fun to think about but at the same time how do we how do we make these kids better how do we see a kid come in at 14 years old and they they're late to things and whatever and start to have the understanding that you know by the time they're 18 years old and ho- hoping to have a job or going to college or whatever it is that they've learned some lessons from us and they can go back and say gosh you know I didn't understand why being on time was so important why you made me run for being late but now that I have a job, I'm so glad I didn't get fired because I, I had some of those um, lessons that you guys taught inside the program. So just kind of really, you know, again, I'm never going to turn off the competitiveness. And inside of a game, I'm always going to want to see the players do their best. And I think we're we're going to have players around that want to do their best. But at the same time, we want to make sure that we're helping them become better people at the end. Good. Um, I asked you to share a quote. And this is the book called uh, Inside Out Coaching by Joe Ehrman. Mm-hmm. And I just want to read the, these last couple sentences and tell me what that means to mm-hmm. your program. Uh, people often ask what kind of success my team will have this season. I tell them I will let them know in 20 years. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Uh, I mean, it, I mean, I think as a coach, I think that's uh, it, that's the hard part in the 
the dog days of January is when you're you're worried about wins and losses or possible playoff opponents and things like that. Uh, and then to take a, kind of take a step back. And no matter what happens, whether you have a, f- a successful season or one that's not as successful, uh, you hope that you know, in a few years, like I said, you're having players come back into your program or, you know, coming to watch your games during their Christmas break or just being around during practice or whatever it is and getting the invites to weddings or sure. to graduations and things like that. Um, you know, it's hard and it's hard. I've only been a head coach at Skyview for six years and, and a few years before that at a previous school. But, um, you know, I'm starting to see, you know, I'm starting to see these kids who I saw at 14, 15 years old, they're 24, 25, 26 years old. And you're like, Whoa, and they're, they're coming back and saying, Coach, I oh, man, I, I appreciate all the messages you, you instilled in us. And that's kind of the impactful thing. And it kind of reemphasizes, okay, we're doing it the right way sometimes. So. Sure. Okay, so hypothetically, let's mm-hmm. say you are talking to 500 first-year varsity coaches. Mm-hmm. What's uh, the advice you're going to give them? Um, you know, I, I think there's a couple, a couple big lessons that I learned. I think setting that why – and revisiting it and having it somewhere, uh, having it be part of your core values, you know, whatever it is that is your why, why you're coaching, um, you know, hopefully you're, if you're, especially if you're doing it at the high school level, uh, you want to make an impact on, on young people. So what is that impact that you want to, how can you measure that? Uh, what are you, um, you know, what are you doing in, the, in those ways? And then kind of write those things down so that it can be a callback to you, uh, as well as a callback to everybody, all the other investors in your program. You're right. going to have there's admin. There's a ton. Yeah, there's a ton. Parents, admin, teachers. Uh, you can't go around saying, well, we want to see boys become men uh, you know, and do this. And then when they're getting in trouble in class and you don't do anything about it, or right. uh, they're at home and not respecting their parents and you know, they're, you're not helping in any way. Uh, they're trying to go to college and you're just gone. You know, those, those are the types of things that you have to then uh, do, uh, do all the time. And again, it's a call back to them. Hey, if I'm not living up to what I'm saying or, or, or our coaches are saying is what we're about, well, let us know. And, and we want to we wanna get that feedback so that we can improve uh, in any way that you can. And so one, one thing that I was thinking about is um, obviously you're, you work at Skyview, but it, yeah. you know, usually it's coach teacher. You're a coach counselor. Mm-hmm. How does that counseling fit in with your coaching? Yeah, I think, you know, there's an inherent advantage of sometimes being a teacher because you get that everyday touch with right. kids uh, throughout the whole entire year. So if, you know, if I was a U.S. history teacher, I might be able to have some of my juniors in my U.S. history class every day throughout the entire year. So as a counselor, I have to be a little bit more um, planful in some of that stuff. Now, the, the, the bright side to that is I get a little bit more flexibility in my schedule to sure. where, you know, if I need to meet with somebody about something, for instance, uh, you know, we have a senior right now who's going through the college decision process. Um, if I need to go meet with them, I can kind of call them into my office like I would right. any other student. So there's some nice things about that. I think, um, you know, just, you know, my counseling training is a lot about trying to help, um, you know, help students get where they want to go um, and, and help students through tough times. And I think, you know, having that open door policy makes it so kids can stop in anytime they want. Um, sometimes it's hard when you're the head coach. They do that. Everybody wants to stop in and tell the head coach with all, everything that's going on in their <laughs> life. But, right. um, but at the same time, I think our kids know that, hey, if they have some schedule questions or if they have questions on, on college or if they have questions, things going on at home, they can come stop by. And so, um, and that, I'm, you know, the, the door is always open, and that, I think that's kind of a nice advantage of being being in the building and, and being a counselor there. Good. So. so, again, you talked a lot about, you know, kids in 20 years. So mm-hmm. let's go back to your mentor. Yeah. Um, what would you want your mentor to know that you've learned at this point now? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think – so I've had a lot of mentors. So I, I don't – I mean, it's always tough because I, I don't know that I've had um, – you know, I've been, I jumped kind of to, to head in a, a varsity head coach fairly quickly, I guess, uh, and that I didn't do a lot of assistant coaching. But um, I go back to my high school coach. Uh, Steve Halligan is his name. He's actually just about to retire from Central Catholic High School uh, in Portland, Oregon, where I went to high school. And um, I guess what I'd want him to know, and, and I've told him this, and I think that's, you know, an important piece that of is, some of this stuff. That is, yeah. Um, but is that his impact, his positive impact on me and his bu- building relationships with me um, you know, impacts future generations, you know, and so uh, <laughs> get a little emotional thinking about it's it, okay. but, yeah, um, it's okay. you know, at this, you know, <clears throat> I took the lessons that I learned from him uh, on a daily basis and he did teach us history. So I got to sit in his class every sure. day, but that relationship that we built, I was like, man, it's got that impact that, that he had on me. I would like to have on other people. Uh, and so I've str- strove to do that, Good. you know, in my stuff. And so he's now, you know, lessons that he taught me, 
gosh, it's 20 years ago, uh, <laughs> but 20 years ago are, are lessons that I'm now passing to my kids that are passing to um, to my players. And now hopefully they're going to be passing it at some point to their kids and, you know, on and on. And so that positive impact, even though, um, you know, letting somebody eat lunch in your office doesn't seem like a big thing, but that, re that relationship that, man, I can have a positive Do that impact. that two or three times a week. All, right? all yeah. of a sudden it's like, man, you're impacting, uh, you know, tons of other people and that it's a, it's a wave. And, uh, that's what I want him to know. And, good. uh, I look forward to, uh, have more opportunities to tell him that. All right. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our next segment is called psych 101. We're going to get into a little oh, bit man. of coach here Gruber's head here. <laughs> uh, if you can, and I know some of these are like, you know, maybe picking your favorite kid. Yes. But what is your best game or best win? ever yeah uh, I thought about that one uh, don't say river <laughs> I should have said that <laughs> dang it why didn't I say that well I was gonna I, and, and those have been some fun I mean the, the river skyview rivalry those has are really good been, huh? it's been a lot of fun uh, and being a uh, I, you know I, I had that growing up in and in high school, we, I went to Central Catholic, and Jesuit, Jesuit was our big, our big tribal. Time. Yeah, and I was at the same time as Mike Dunleavy who ended up playing oh, yeah, in the NBA. Yeah. So getting to play in those big games was great. I, you know, I, I went to when I when you when I saw the questions ahead of time. It, the first thing I thought of was, you know, we got had a um, first time in the Tacoma Dome school history, and we had a, a, a basically a buzzer beater to win yeah. against Glacier Peak that got us into the final eight. Uh, again, never having played in the, in the Tacoma Dome at school history and being able to get to the final eight was a pretty big, and it was a you know, close game, great game. Um, so that was a lot of fun for us. Uh, I think also kind of in that same ilk was, you know, that the game against Olympia a couple of you know, weeks, or about a, a week before, a couple weeks before, yeah, yeah. where we actually cemented our first time to going to the state tournament, which, uh, you know, getting there and, and having to build a program that we weren't very successful those first couple of years and getting to the point where we get to play in the state tournament uh, was pretty cool and, and kind of like, okay, we're doing this the right way and some validation for the, the players and definitely for the coaching staff that's put a, right. lot of, a lot of extra hours in. So that was a pretty fun, pretty fun moment for us. All right. What about your most haunting loss? Yeah, it's so hard. I have a short memory. So, <laughs> you know, we lost this year to Sumner. Uh, we had a good, like you said, we were in the top uh, 10 most of the year, top five in a lot uh, of polls. Uh, we were playing pretty good basketball and got uh, into a spot where all that snow happened and, and every, you know, excuses, excuses, but we got in a spot where we didn't play our best ball sure. and got knocked out of the playoffs earlier than we wanted to. And just knowing that we had, um, you know, guys that had put in so much time into it, a really special group of kids just having a lot of fun. I thought, man, this group's going to, do it again this is going to be out not only we're going to go you know once in a row to the or once to the Tacoma Dome but twice in a row possibly and then not playing our best basketball that one you know that one still sticks with me I still wake up every once in a while going gosh you know we should have you know yes. come up with something like that but uh again uh, we as we talked about after that and it goes back to what we've been talking about you know this is a life lesson there's going to be disappointments in your life how do you deal with that how do you bounce back and uh so you know I have to try to uh, match what I say with my actions and so kind of that same thing with, Good. with the kids um, and this is kind of the only real X's and O's, kind of. Yeah. I'm, I'm just curious, uh, for all our coaches, how do you use data in your practice or game prep? Yeah, we do use a lot of um, game data. Um, I, I would say every off season, our coaching staff kind of sits around and looks at the game data from the previous season. So we have that all broken down, all of our percentages, all of our stuff. And so kind of looking at where might our weak spots be. Um, for the next season so sure. okay hey w these are our guys coming back and you know rebounding is an issue we've got to really focus on rebounding this year so um, those type of things so we do it in kind of that big scope thing where we're looking at season to season and using that data and then game to game even okay where are we where do we feel like we're struggling so looking at individual game stats where are guys most efficient from uh, so we um, use a video program that kind of breaks that stuff down for us uh, and I know a lot of you know there's there's a couple of different programs huddle and we use crossover right, right now um, where we can get that stuff broken down for us we okay man we shoot really well from this spot how do we design our offense to get get to our get to shoot that shot sure. um, and those type of things so we'll do that in the small scale individually in games so looking at stats from the last game or last group of games and then we'll do it at the big scale towards the end of the season okay our off season um, workouts have got to be trained around Hey, we need to get corner threes because that's the most efficient shot for us. Or hey, we got we shot terribly from the free throw line. We got to really improve our amount of free throws that we're shooting in our off season or, or during season workouts. So I think that's kind of the the main spot that we're, we're able to do. That try to then create the drills. You know, hey, we're we're really struggling with turnovers. Okay, we got to create drills where kids are playing with 
with pressure. So then going into those, right. or going into that practice, this is, a, this is a struggle for us. So let, how are we going to, what, what kind of drills? And we, we've got great coaches on our staff. We just kind of, what are you doing? What, are we gonna, what, what, what ideas do you have? Kind of move forward on, okay, this is a drill that we're going to use. And, we, you know, hey, varsity's using it. And because we need work in the whole entire program, let JV freshmen use it kind of all throughout. So uh, really trying to use the data that way. Then we try to do some data inside practice that might uh, influence our game decisions. So we do a free throw ladder every day. Um, not every day, but just about every day. We have our top free throw shooters shoot against mm. each other. Winner moves up the ladder. Sure. The loser moves down. And so it's a competition inside of that. And then I, well, as we tell them, if, you get a, you know, if we get a spot where we need to choose a shooter, we're going to choose a guy. We know. Yeah, we have it. It's already written down. We've been tracking it all, all the time. You're shooting 25. We write them all down, and we have an idea of who's our best shooters. Good. Um, I assume you've only coached two. I have. Doesn't, That's correct. So who are the best athletes ever coached not necessarily yeah. best basketball player yeah. but like a kid that would be all league and say five sports or something yeah who, who well you, you know Al, uh, alex schumacher is our senior this year right. he's uh, uh like i said he's gonna go play in college here um shortly he's a great athlete and and i didn't realize it until we went to uh washington state team camp and at washington state team camp we went bowling uh, and he's the best, best bowler. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, obviously he's not been practicing bowling, but and then the kids tell me that their, you know, their team get together. He's a great ping pong player. I mean, he's just one of those guys that's really good athlete all the way top to bottom. So athletically, he's, um, you know, one of the best guys. Uh, I think also kind of the cool thing about him. Uh, is just his growth as a person. Like when he came in as a freshman at 14 years old to where he's going to leave us at 18 years old, it's been pretty cool to watch. Uh, another great athlete that we coached was Mason Scheidel. Mm. Uh, Mason Scheidel uh, played for us a couple years varsity at Skyview um, and was also a state champion in track right. and very good cross country runner. And I coached uh, him in track in seventh grade. Yeah, and yeah. so obviously it's clear. Obviously, yes. we could tell the influence that you had on him at seventh grade. <laughs> Uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he was a great competitor. Knew how to work hard. I didn't have to ever coach him about effort. Um, I don't. It, I probably didn't matter what sport he fell in love with. He was going to be the hardest worker in that right. sport. He would leave our workouts and then go do a mile run uh, or do the mile run. He would run to our practice and then come to our practice. So. Um, you know, it's been fun to follow him. He also then went on a, on his mission and, yeah. and kind of following through on that and, and seeing him grow has a, it's been really fun. And I know no matter what he's going to do, he's going to be successful in, uh, because of that. Yeah, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. As a fan, who are or what are your favorite sports teams or your favorite coaches? Yeah, I've always enjoyed watching the Blazers. I was a big basketball fan, so um, you know I've been definitely watching the Blazers and their run right now with Lillard and those guys. Uh, I grew up my I was born uh, in Ohio. Uh, mm. But my dad lived a lot of his life in the Detroit area, so he grew up, or so he didn't go there, but became a University of Michigan fan, and so that's even though I don't really have any huge ties to it, that's what I grew up watching. Uh, so I'm a huge University of Michigan fan, and I, I've really become a fan of uh, John Beeline. Mm. The head basketball coach there at University of Michigan. Good success the last few years, yeah. A lot of good success, and I think a lot of it has to do with you know who he is as a person. But they're kind of focused on daily improvement and, and, and developing players and watching players come in, um, you know, off the radar and then leave as NBA draft picks. And then also how he takes those kids and um, changes his plan or what he does around those kids so if he's got really good point guard coming off a of pick and roll well they run a lot of pick and roll and if they don't well then they're doing a lot more pass and cut and so he's never quite he, even though he has a framework of what he likes to do uh he's going to take a look at his talent around him and, and where his coaches are strong and where his players are strong and and build that program around that which i think is a really big piece to coaching um you know it's easy to say these are our five plays and we're going to run them no matter who we have uh versus Gosh, what do we have coming back? We have no size coming back. We got to go. We got to change what we're doing. Uh, and sometimes it makes it hard for consistency throughout the, the program. They might be learning multiple offenses, but uh, or defenses or whatever right. the case might be. But when you look around and you say, okay, well, we've got to change how we play because this is what we have, uh, or these are, and it's, it's beyond just even the people. Sometimes it's your facilities. Okay, well, Scott, you got one gym, right. uh, one playable gym for games, right? We got the upper gym for practices, but no second gym. So we've got and to adapt. you got to share that anyway. And yeah. We, yeah, exactly. So we've got to we've got to adapt how we would do things. Right. And, right. and I think the best coaches can see wherever they're at and adapt to the environment around them. Uh, and I think Beeline does a great job, and he's done that every stop that he's had. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. That flexibility is huge. It's, As an AD, that's what. 
I look for, you know, coach, what can we do then? You know, right. we need problem solvers. Yeah, right? and it's and it's sometimes tough because it's easy to get into that, well, gosh, look what they have. or what, And you can't really, you know, the more time you spend focused on that, we talk about that being an uncontrollable. Yep. We can only control the controllable, so we can only control our effort or what we're going to do, and so we have to be a little bit more creative sometimes or um, we have to work a little bit longer sometimes, but uh, that's been the best thing about our, our staff. And, the, and even the admin at Skyview, they're supportive of, hey, what, what can we do different and how can we do that? Um, so just trying to put things around that. Good. Thank you. Yeah. All right, our next segment is rapid fire. I okay. promise that these won't have anything yeah. to do have with no sports. For this one. Yeah. Nothing to do with okay. sports. It's just rapid okay. fire questions. And they're very kind of off the wall. Okay. But that's okay. Yeah, we want to know Coach Gruler here. <laughs> okay, what's a common pizza topping that really shouldn't be on pizza? Oh. Well, I'm not a big uh, I'm not a big mushroom guy. Okay. So I would I would go with no mushrooms. Uh, I if I'm gonna go get pizza I want, you know. I want the meat. I don't want the veggies as much. Give me the meat, not the veggies. Got it. Yeah. Star Wars or Star Trek? Ooh, I'm not. I, I'm going to go with neither. I'm not a big fan of no. either of them. I know. <laughs> Coach, I'm, the I'm question offended. was. I know. <laughs> if, if I was going to pick, I'd probably go Star Wars. I've seen more Star Wars than I have Star Trek, but uh, I probably haven't seen a Star Wars movie. And I'm probably offending a lot of people out there, uh, but probably in 20 years I haven't seen a, a Star Wars or Star Trek anything. Okay. That's all right. Okay, another hypothetical. Game of Thrones, though, I'm in on that. Okay, and I, and I just told Nick a few minutes. I've never watched an episode of Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah, so, see, I think you're missing there that. There you go. Um, hypothetically, okay. you win a grand prize. Okay. You have two options to pick from this grand prize. Okay. The first option is one year in Europe mm -hmm. plus a $2,000 a month stipend. Okay. You do whatever you want. Sure. Okay. The second prize or second option is 10 minutes on the moon. Which one Ooh. are you picking? a great question i'm gonna pick the 10 minutes on the moon thank you uh, i think you know having a year in europe I, there's probably a, a bunch of people who've done that and uh but hey man go on the moon how many right? people have done that how there, cool you'd would be that the 13th i would there, that would i be, think it's that's what uh, i you know lucky number 13 I, i'd love that i think that'd be the best perfect that's fun all right and last okay the definitive basketball question okay mj or lebron Oh, that's a, that is definitive, and I don't, I don't, I always, I've picked a LeBron. I, I've been on the LeBron camp, and I grew up with Jordan. I was gonna say, uh, yeah, and that's I, in I, your so wheelhouse. Most people there. in my era, they're Jordan first. Uh, I think Jordan's the best winner, and if I had to pick a team of uh, who I had to win today, um, you know, probably Jordan. It, you know, if I had to win a cutthroat game, he's probably the guy I go with. But as far as physical tools and and ability to do everything on the court, man, LeBron is something to watch and. I love the way that he um, makes the right basketball play. And some of the best players, and Jordan included at times, would make the he, – he, he's like, I don't want to trust anybody. I, I am that alpha dog that's going to take this shot, whereas LeBron's always been a pretty, pretty good career of making the right basketball play. Uh, some sometimes it was disadvantage, but, man, he can do some things that I don't know if anybody else has yeah, ever he done. like 6'9 and 260 yeah, I mean, or whatever. He, yeah. If he was 20 years ago, they'd have put him at center. And, right. You know, I mean, now I mean, he's basically a point guard yeah. uh, in a lot of what he does and sees the floor really well. I mean, he's unbelievable. Um, you know, it's kind of blasphemous for me to say that, but uh, I think when it's all said and done, I think LeBron will have, uh, you know, I think he's the better basketball player. Good. Thank yeah. you. Well, Coach Guler, again, I appreciate your time today. Yeah. Uh, good Great. luck next season. Thank Have you. a good rest of the school year. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yep.